Hello, let's start our second session on functional analysis. In this session, we will be discussing about quotient spaces in detail. So, in last session, we have defined what is meant by coset of a vector space. Suppose E, hereafter I will be using E uh, for linear spaces. Most commonly, I will be using E. Let E be a linear space and E1 be its subspace. Then uh, we have defined uh, for uh, suppose x is an element of E, we have defined coset of x as x plus E1, which is set of all x plus y, where y varies over E1. This is our definition for a coset and we have defined, uh, we, uh, we have noted that two cosets, class X and class Y are either disjoint or they are equal, class X equal to class Y. So how can we prove this? Either they are disjoint or they are equal. So I am assuming that uh, anyway, one, one thing is sure, two cosets are either disjoint or not disjoint. So, I am taking class X intersection class Y is non-empty. So, there is at least one element say Z in class X intersection class Y. And this means Z is in class X. S and Z is in class Y. If Z is in class X, we can say that Z, uh, Z is an element of class X implies, we can write express Z as X plus some X1 where this X1 is an element of E1. Similarly, Z element of class Y implies we can express Z as Y plus some Y1 where uh, this Y1 is also an element of E1. Okay, then uh, both of them are Z. So, we can say that X plus X1 is same as Y plus Y1. And this implies x minus y equal to y1 minus x1. But this y1 and x1 are elements of e1. y1 and x1 are elements of e1. So y1 minus x1 is in e1 since e1 is a subspace. So it is closed under scalar multiplication. So this means x minus y is an element of e1. So class X intersection class Y not equal to phi implies X minus Y is an element of E1. Okay. Now, uh, I, I need to prove that class X is equal to class Y. For that, I am taking uh, one element from the class X and I will prove that it is contained in class Y and similarly, we can prove the Reversing, uh, reverse inclusion also. So, suppose uh, I am taking one say say Z in class X. So, as we told earlier, I can express Z as X plus X1 for X1 element of E1. Now, I can write this uh, Z as X minus Y plus Y plus X1. I am adding Y and subtracting Y. So, actually there is no change. And this is same as Y plus X minus Y plus x1 because vector addition is commutative. Okay. Now, 
we have already proved that class x equal to class y implies x minus y is in e1 so this is in e1 x1 is in e1 so their product is in e1 so i can express z as y plus some element of e1 some element of e1 so this z is in y plus e1 which is class of y so class of x is a subset of class of y if you interchange the uh, roles of x and y in this proof we can prove that class y is a contained in class x also so two cosets class x and class y are either identical or they are disjoint class x intersection class y is equal to phi okay now we have defined coset and we are defining quotient space now say here uh, i will use e over e1 this is set of all class x where x varies over e and we have already discussed in the last session that we can define a vector addition and a scalar multiplication here such that class x plus class y is equal to class of x plus y and uh, uh, a scalar c times class x is equal to class of cx with respect to these operations e over e1 becomes a linear space and class of 0 class of 0 is nothing but e1 will serve as identity this is the this is our uh, zero vector of e over e1 okay since e over e1 is a vector space it will have a dimension so dimension of e over e1 is known as co-dimension of e1 now let's do this problem find co-dimension of c naught in c so we know that c means uh, the space of all convergent sequences and c naught means the space of all sequences that converges to zero so surely the c naught is contained in c so c naught is a subspace of c so we can think about c over c naught and we have to find the dimension of c over c naught for that i am taking an x from c means this x is a convergent sequence if it is a convergent sequence it will have a limit and I am calling this limit as A. Okay. Now, think about the sequence A, 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 etc. The constant sequence A. Let me denote it by say Y. So, Y is constant sequence A, 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 etc. I can denote, uh, I can express this as A times sequence 1, 1, 1, 1, etc let me denote this 1 1 1 1 etc constant sequence 1 as a big one now what about uh, x minus y we know that x converges to a y also converges to a that means x minus y converges to 0 because both x and y converges to a so x minus y converges to 0 and this means x minus y is in c naught if x minus y is in c naught we know that class of x is same as class of y now this class of y means um, so i can uh, from here i can write y as a times big one 
where big one is the constant sequence one. So this is class of a times one, which is a times class of one. So you take any class x. Uh, if you take any x from C, class x can be written as a scalar multiple of class one. So we need only one element, one vector to span C over C naught. Then we can say that dimension of C over C naught is equal to one because we need only one vector to span the entire space. So co-dimension of C over C naught is uh, co-dimension of C naught in C is one. In the next class, we will continue um, our discussion on quotient space. Uh, so go through these portions carefully and study well. All the best.